All right, everybody, it's time for a review of Modern here at Mythic Championship London. I've been joined by Frank Karsten here, and you've run the numbers as you are wont to do. And I think a lot of people are wondering, how did the decks do this tournament? So wrap it up for us, Frank. Yes, indeed. Um, even though the, the Mythic Championship rewards both performance in draft and modern, uh, I was interested in seeing how the various modern archetypes uh, performed in the modern rounds uh, specifically. So indeed, let's just uh, take a look at those numbers. Here we have uh, the modern match win rates of all the major archetypes during the modern rounds uh, only. And already a bunch of things uh, are, are quite interesting. Tron, first and foremost, even though it was uh, the most popular deck, and even though it put two players into the top eight, and even though it, it did benefit uh, quite a lot from the London Mulligan rule, if you look at all the modern uh, matches that were being played as a whole at this event, it had a substandard uh, win rate. Wow, per look yeah, at that. Perhaps uh, players were just uh, ready for Tron, you know, with uh, Damping Sphere, Alpine Moon in the sideboard, perhaps even Mulvole Acid Moss, uh, yes. which we saw do some work. <laughs> um, but yeah, Tron uh, didn't actually win all that much. Decks that did win uh, during the modern rounds uh, as a whole were, uh, were humans. It had uh, like a substantially above average uh, win rate. So it doesn't really come as a big surprise that uh, there were three human players in the, in the top eight. It appeared that it was just a well-positioned deck for the modern metagame uh, at the moment right now. And two other decks also uh, did uh, particularly well. Those were uh, Hardened Skills, 56% uh, win rate, as well as uh, Ad Nauseum, and then quite an impressive 61.7% uh, win rate. Well, let's take a closer look at a Hardened Scales deck list here and go a little bit deeper into this because this is a deck that I think a lot of pros had their sights on coming into the tournament as something that might be really successful. Here we take a look at a deck from Louis Scott Vargas. Yeah, Hardened Scales shows that uh, Mox Opal is still one of the better cards uh, in Modern. And it also benefited a little bit from the London Mulligan rule because, let's say, um, an opening hand with uh, five or six cards but with hardened skills is generally still going to be better than a seven card hand without hardened skills because it just powers up all the synergies uh, in the deck. This was the best performing list uh, at the event, indeed, played by uh, Luis Scott Vargas, eight and two during the modern rounds. Luis only went 2-4 and four in draft, so he uh, did not end up making yet another top 8, <laughs> but still uh, a very impressive performance. Final thing to note about this list, there are still four copies of Steel Overseer. Several players have been cutting them uh, recently. Why but, is that? Uh, it's just a bit uh, slow, uh, easily interacted with, but uh, Luis felt that uh, like the, the synergy with hardened skills is just too good to pass up. Well, let's take a look at another deck list that performed very well in the modern portion of our tournament, and that is an Ad Nauseam deck list. Whew, talking about Nauseam, <laughs> this is what that deck gives me, oh, as a Boggles player. T <laughs> take me through this deck here, 8-2 uh, and two record as well. Yes, um, so the, the game plan for Ad Nauseam is to assemble the two-card combo of, uh, of Angel's Grace and Ad Nauseam. You draw your entire deck, and then just exile a couple Steam and Spirit Guides to cast a lethal uh, Lightning Storm. There were actually two players at uh, eight and two. Here you see uh, Daniel Grevensteiner's uh, ad nauseum list, who uh, you know did quite well during the, the modern rounds. I guess there are two reasons why this deck uh, performed so well uh, in modern. First up, it probably benefited from the London Mulligan rule because it is trying to assemble a two-card combo and just uh, by making especially your like four and five cards hands way better, it becomes easier to assemble uh, like both of your combo pieces. The other thing is that this is a combo deck that is actually not uh, affected by graveyard hate at all. We saw that uh, Surgical point. Extraction was uh, the most played card in modern as a whole across the entire event. Um, both a lot of copies in main decks and sideboards. And some players, players even had uh, Rest in Peace and Leyland of the Void in their main decks yeah. in this tournament. So having a combo deck that uh, doesn't really care about graveyard hate at all means that you're well positioned. And I think that the players who chose Ad Nauseam um, as a whole posted uh, an excellent win rate. Well, we also spotted some pretty cool, I would call, fringe decks or spicier decks that were brought to this tournament, and you wanted to highlight some of those. And the first one we're going to take a look at is Red Eldrazi. Red Eldrazi. All right, so tell me a little bit about this deck, Frank. So there were a bunch of Eldrazi decks uh, at the tournament, and, you know, all of them are trying to ramp into Tatnot Seer or Reality Smasher with your uh, Eldrazi temples. 
All of them also uh, had access to Chalice of the Void, which together with Simeon Spirit Guide you can put down for access one as early as turn one. Given that all the most played cards in modern were all one mana, one mana spells, yes. that explains why Chalice of the Void on one is so powerful. And this deck isn't affected by it at all. Um, this deck also had access to uh, you know some sweet synergy with Eternal Scourge, thanks to uh, Serum Powder as well as uh, Gemstone Caverns. The deck could exile it uh, before the game even started. So if you uh, would just mulligan aggressively towards Eldrazi Temple with this deck, you would find uh, on average about like 0.32 Eternal Scourges, which is just you know free cards, <laughs> and that uh, that helps. Uh, but as I mentioned, like there were a bunch of different Eldrazi decks, yes, uh, either colorless or in, or in, in, in various uh, colors, white, yeah, yeah, red green as well. Um, but it was actually the this red version that had the best record among mm. all Eldrazi decks, and thanks to Eldrazi Obligator, Ramana Bruins, Chandra. Uh, you just get some extra reach, you increase the clock a little bit, and that proved quite successful. Mark Jacobson ended up finishing 10th uh, in 10th place on the back of his 8-2 uh, modern record. Oh, fabulous. All right, let's take another look at another deck that might have been a little bit under the radar this weekend, but it's a favorite of some people for sure, and of breakfast lovers everywhere. Let's take a look at Cheerios. All right, so the name, of course, here referring to uh, the zero mana spells that we have here, looking like a Cheerio. Tell us more about this deck, Frank. So uh, this is, uh, it, it is a bit of a silly combo deck. You just mulligan towards uh, Pure Steel Paladin uh, or SRAM. Then you just, uh, you know, pray that your opponent doesn't have a Fatal Push or Lightning Bolt. <laughs> uh, and then cast a whole bunch of one mana equipment, uh, zero mana equipment. Uh, draw most of your deck. Mox Opal, retract, do it all again. Two Mox Opals, Grape Shot for the win. And even with uh, like Simeon Spirit Guide or Mox Opal, this deck actually has the possibility of a turn one kill, which is ridiculous. It is also very easily interacted with. But uh, yeah, Luke went uh, seven and three on his way to uh, a 20th place uh, finish. Uh, the other Cheerios player in the event, Ken Yukihiro, went uh, six and four. Uh, those were the only two players on this archetype, but both did well. Um, so perhaps another deck that benefited from the London Mulligan rule and uh, is one to keep an eye on. If you like combo decks that do things that look pretty ridiculous, Cheerios might be up your alley. Well, let's take a look at another deck that you've pulled out for us. This one, Vanifer Pod. And we actually got to see this in the feature match, match area early on in the tournament. It didn't win there. But talk a little bit about this deck and kind of the history of where it comes from, why we call it Vanifer Pod. So Pod is a reference to the card uh, Birthing Pod which um, is essentially the same ability as on uh, Prime Speaker Vanifar. Burning Path is not legal in, uh, in modern at the moment, but Prime Speaker Vanifar is. Uh, that card was printed very recently in Ravnica Allegiance, and it just uh, spurred this entire archetype. And there's just a very easy six-step process uh, to, to uh, winning with uh, Prime Speaker Vanifar. So <laughs> All right, go through it, Frank. Okay, let me break it down uh, for you. So you start with uh, Prime Speaker Vanifar and just a Noble Hierarch on the battlefield. Okay. You untap. Then, okay, step one. You pod Noble Hierarch into a Script Ranger. Okay. Untap Vanifar. Step two. You pod Script Ranger into Renegade Rallyer. Uh, bring back Script Ranger uh, and untap uh, Vanifar. Uh, step number three. You uh, pod the uh, Script Ranger into Village Bellringer, untap uh, Vanifar. <laughs> Step number four. <laughs> this is where Rich walks in front of the camera again and just starts shaking his head. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> you uh, you pod the Renegade Rallyer <laughs> into Restoration Angel. Okay. You blink the Village Bellringer and untap Vanifar. Step number five is then you pod the Restoration Angel into uh, Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. And step six, okay, now you have Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker on the battlefield along with Village Bellringer, which means that you can make infinite uh, copies of the Village Bellringer with haste and attack full lethal. Whew, well, I'm tired just after listening <laughs> to that. What is, the, what is the pull of this deck? Why is this deck attractive for someone to play at this tournament? Uh, the Besides just being awesome. Uh, well, the, <laughs> the history of uh, like uh, Birthing Pod is, uh, is definitely one. Uh, but also you have access to all these kinds of toolbox creatures uh, that uh, you can uh, get with either Prime Speak of Venifar or Eldritch Evolution. Uh, if you like kind of a toolbox deck where you can get the right creature for the right matchup at any time, uh, this is just perfect. Let's take a look at the final deck that you've pulled out for us here as something interesting from the tournament. And I know a lot of people were looking forward to this Electro Balance deck. All right, tell us about this. Yeah, so Jan Marit Merkel was uh, the only player at the entire event to register the card uh, Electro Dominance. 
uh, another recent mm. edition from yes. uh, Ravnica Legions. And when that one was printed, modern players were quite excited about it. Not so much to you know shoot damage, but rather because it allows you to uh, cast cards like uh, Ancestral Vision or Restore Balance uh, for free without having to go through the entire suspend process. Uh, and that just uh, gives you extra effective copies of S foretold, increasing the whole consistency of this type of archetype. The, um, uh, the one thing to keep in mind with this deck is, uh, okay, generally you want to break the symmetry on Restore Balance with uh, Greater Gargadon. But uh, this deck is capable of the, the silliest thing possible in modern. We so call it going into <laughs> evil mode with yes. this deck. <laughs> so suppose uh, you would mulligan down to four, and your opponent is like, ah, yes, this is, uh, well, may maybe not actually do, do the, pimp, the, the fist pump, but, uh, you know, be happy that they, they, they will have a, a great chance that yes. game. So you mulligan to four, uh, on the play, you go uh, mountain, go. Then during your opponent's draw step, you exile Seaman Spirit Guide, cast Electro Dominance, play Restore Balance, and everything is gone. Complete balance, no cards, no permanence, uh, everything is just reset. So if you like uh, to do, or at least have the <laughs> ability uh, to do completely <laughs> evil things, uh, even, even though it doesn't benefit anyone. Just no, like, it's uh, just fun, or <laughs> yeah. not fun. <laughs> Whatever kind of player you are. <laughs> yeah, well, this deck is, uh, is capable of it. True top deck mode. <laughs> All right, Frank, I got to ask you, if you're playing out there in this tournament, what deck would you have brought? Um, I would have brought, well, either uh, Affinity, uh, that's just uh, the deck that I've been playing in Modern for, uh, for quite a while, and I do believe that Modern is a format that just rewards uh, experience, familiarity with, with the deck and all the matchups, so that would have been my choice, or perhaps Dredge, because uh, that was a deck that um, you know, impressed me quite a lot in testing, that also benefited uh, a whole lot from the, from the London Mulligan rule. And would have been uh, like also my uh, my backup choice. Interestingly, the, the w there was one player who went uh, nine and one in modern mm. um, in this event, Claudio uh, Barrientos Ochoa, uh, and he was playing uh, Dredge. So still a very powerful deck uh, in modern, even if it uh, may not be uh, playing for the title. Well, excellent. Thank you so much, Frank Karsten. There's a deeper look on modern here at Mythic Championship London.